There are millions of different approaches, yeah. whether it's how you put content together or whether the cadence that yeah. we're talking about or whether it's the style or the positioning yeah. or for that matter, just all the subject matter. Yeah. You know, I, I'll be the first to tell you that in the world of podcasting, I bet supply chain, which I've had people say, you do a podcast on supply chain <laughs> and you have listeners, you know, and, and, and <laughs> yeah. that's okay, yeah. you know, but it just, they're, they're, one of the beauties of this digital space yeah. uh, is there's so many different ways to get there and to tell the stories. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's so rewarding all along the way. Welcome to Industrial Sage, a free video podcast series all about digital marketing for industrial manufacturers. Hear interviews with your peers and find out how they're solving the same challenges that you might be facing in your own field. Coming to you from the Optimum Production Studio in Atlanta, Georgia, this is Industrial Sage. All right, so let's jump in today's episode. I have Mr. Scott Luton, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Supply Chain, right? From Supply Chain Now Radio. Scott, thank you so much for coming on to it. Industrial Sage. You bet. Excited to do it. We've been talking for a while, yep. and it is uh, incredible uh, what y'all have been doing and, and all the stories y'all been featuring. So glad to be here. Well, we feel the same exact way about you. So for those who aren't familiar, mm. uh, you've, you know, big podcast, mm. uh, Supply Chain Now Radio. Tell me, you know, for those who aren't familiar, the two who aren't familiar, um, <laughs> you know, tell me or tell them uh, about uh, who you guys are, what you guys sure. do, a little, little bit of background there. Sure. So, uh, you know, we've been doing digital media, mainly webinars, going back five, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed uh, the the remote, the convenience, the ability to kind of pick and choose what stories needed a big spotlight, right? Yeah. Whether it's people or companies or best practices. So enjoyed that for a while. And then in May 2017, the world, as it turns out, changed a lot for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we kicked off our first podcast with some partners here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And really, we went from once a month to now we're, we're uh, you know, seven, eight shows a week. Because not... Um, we enjoy it, right? We're very passionate <laughs> yeah. about it. We love That's important. telling yeah. the story, right? However, there's what we have come to find out, the industry, the Indian supply chain industry on a whole has a big perception problem. Mm. And number two, a lot of things that make it happen, a lot of things that make packages delivered on your door two days later mm. or yeah. be able to send back packages that may be at wrong sizes, wrong colors, what have yeah. you, and really everything that happens in between uh, that doesn't get any spotlight, no visibility. Yeah. Nope. Uh, whether it's the people that make it happen or the, the emerging technologies or, or for that matter, the problems yeah. that have to be solved to make global business and global supply chain happen, all of that needs more visibility. And that's, that's the basis of our business model. That's awesome. So I'm excited to jump into that and, yeah. and unpack a little bit more. But before we do that, let, let, tell me a little bit about your background. Like, yeah. how did you? So, I were mean, doing the whole podcasting. You said, but 2017, right? Yeah, but, so, what had happened? You know, what was pre 2017? What, sure. What's your background? So, in a nutshell, I'm uh, born and raised in Aiken, South Carolina. Okay. Moved to Atlanta in 2005, I believe. Okay. Uh, right. Met my wife Amanda, uh, father of three kids uh, and two dogs, Dexter and Ruby. Uh, my <laughs> wife and kids would would make sure they get mentioned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, but but. You know, from a professional standpoint, we've been serving the um, really the end-to-end -end supply chain community for over 15 years. Uh, a lot of that time has been spent in the manufacturing industry mm -hmm. or serving the manufacturing mm -hmm. industry. And you know, at the end of the day, one of the things I really enjoyed the most is facilitating um, forums or dinner meetings or workshops where folks are interacting and they're mm -hmm. exchanging ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in in whether it's supply chain or in the business world in general. Th so many folks and leaders and practitioners are searching for answers and market yeah. intel and what have you. And, and it's been very rewarding, whether it's through industry associations or you know, some of the digital media we produced or some of the other initiatives to help facilitate that. So that, in a nutshell, is my background. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, in 2013, we, we uh, were pushed out of the tree, so to speak. We, we became an entrepreneur, uh, had no, well, had a, had a little bit of a plan, <laughs> yeah. but I think as you can probably relate, many folks can probably relate, that plan changes dramatically when you've got to put, when the rubber meets road, right? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure your perfectly laid plans were exactly what you ended up executing on, but kidding aside, that, it yeah. changed for everybody, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, we launched our first business in 2013, which focused on a, a training and, and consulting, mm -hmm. uh, a lot around Lean Six Sigma. Okay. Yeah. And two and a half years later, sold that 
to jump into with, with some uh, longtime friends and partners uh, back on the workforce side of things, okay. still supporting yeah. supply chain, manufacturing, yeah. engineering, um, uh, fought the good fight there for about four years. And while we did that, um, we were continued to, because we enjoyed it yeah. as much as we have, continued to, to churn out content and interview folks and, and you know, share case studies and, and uh, you name it. And we just had an epiphany. Yeah. Hey, this, is, this could well be, especially bouncing the idea off my wife, what we're here for, yeah. right? To, to really focus and double down on this. So, so that is and what- this being what? The, the supply like, chain our radio. Supply chain our yeah. radio, yeah. So that was always, that, that the, those efforts and, and the resources and the content, we, that was always in the back seat. And in, that, in the last couple of years, that's changed dramatically to the point where uh, in, in uh, spring of 2019, we decided to make a big, bold bet and do this full time. Okay. You know, yeah. Go to bed thinking about it. <laughs> jump out of bed in the mornings thinking about it. And, and since that time, we have grown dramatically. We've built a lot of momentum. We've got some new partnerships that we've already launched and more that we'll be launching in the weeks and months ahead. And, and we're all doing what we absolutely love to do. That's key. You know, that, that passion piece, mm -hmm. right? You know, so, how, so you mentioned that you, you kind of were doing this for a little bit before. Mm -hmm. What did that look like initially? This, this is back, you know, the prior 2017 yeah. Yeah. Or, or, you know. So, yeah, a great question. Um, you said know, webinars I, and stuff? Yeah, webinars yeah. primarily. Yeah. And, and, you know, w webinars and podcasts are terms that are thrown around a lot. Sure. And, yeah. and people have all kinds of different notions of what they are. Um, however, what I have found, especially in supply chain, especially where there's, there's so many challenges and things are changing so rapidly, and to get things made, uh, procured, made, delivered, and then even returned, mm -hmm. Folks are constantly looking for new ideas, and oftentimes yeah. they can't step out of their offices to go to this lunch meeting or, mm -hmm. or go to this dinner meeting, or what have you. Um, so, uh, what we will, the genesis of our work really was with industry associations, uh, namely uh, ASCM, the Association for Supply Chain Management, especially their APICS channel. Uh, we volunteered locally in Atlanta uh, on the board uh, and served as president of the local chapter, and then also regionally with their, uh, at the time, their Southeast District, which served about 33 chapters across the, the uh, Southeast, uh, U.S. Southeast uh, region. And one of the first things we, we uncovered is that, hey, these folks, a lot, a lot of these folks in some of these smaller markets don't have a chance or the resources mm -hmm. or the time to put together monthly dinner meetings, right? Yeah, yeah. So... First thing out of the box, it's not the most creative thing. Let's do a monthly webinar series, right? Hey, yeah. I enjoyed doing it. We knew how to do it. Yeah. And we felt there was a need. Um, and that really began to resonate. We got a lot of great feedback. We continue to see numbers and, and more interest in that program. Um, and and that so that at, that's what started us down the path to really say, hey, you know, there could be something here yeah. that is um, a business model. Um and so that locally, that was my personal experience. And then if you look at the industry, the global industry, um, there is a lot more uh, dollars coming into organizations that are looking for ways. We've talked about this, mm -hmm. I think, when you, you were on our show. Um, they're trying, the, they're more and more effort and deliberate effort is and, and um, bandwidth is going into how can we, you know, how can we tout our capabilities, yeah. our, our capacity, right. our expertise in a way that's not, just a 30-second commercial. Right, yeah. But is in a way that's that's based on stories and anecdotes and problems and, and kind of on the human human aspect of it all. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. When we're de it's definitely, I, I think we're on the the very beginning of that wave, mm. to be honest. I, mm. I really think that it's, you know, the, the opportunity and the need. I think a lot of companies, particularly, you know, in, our, in the spaces that we're working, mm. they recognize it, but they haven't, Fully like implemented it. Yes. I mean, they're, are there start? They're like, okay, let's dip our toe and let's start doing that mm. a little bit. So, but well, Danny, I, I can tell you from our, all of our interactions through uh, several years now, especially when when uh, you you were our guest um, a few weeks back, you get it and you're doing it. Mm. And to your point, I think a lot more folks will will um, will be following your lead. Frankly, I mm. mean, um, you get the uh, what I really have enjoyed about our conversations is you get that it can't be. I mean, yeah, there's some great commercials right now. Right, yeah. Uh, the Apple commercials around the holidays. And right. that, those are the first ones that come to mind. Publix are known for their, you know, their yeah. commercials, right? But if you look at a lot of those, none of those 
our product first. It right, is yeah. the story, yeah, exactly. right? Exactly. That pulls yeah. you in, right? And and that's and and seeing all of your work through the years, you get it. And I think a lot of the other um, uh, sectors and a lot of the traditional industry, I'll call it, mm -hmm. they're coming around. They realize that okay, we got to. This is a needs to be a big shift. Yeah. Well, yeah, I I, I agree, hundred percent. I mean, you know, storytelling. Mm. Um, and it's and it's you know I think a big piece and I think this is what you guys are doing really well uh, is that um, it's not about selling mm. you know when you think of marketing or advertising it's like okay we got to hit them we got to sell we got to right. sell and super transactional what you're doing is you're offering that platform for people to be able to really we talk about you know share ideas right uh, I love how you were talking about how you know you know these are busy uh, mm. busy people executives mm. or not what. I, Everyone's busy, and so the ability to go to a, you know one of these dinners or something like that, right? It's really hard. Yes. Um, but there's so much value, and there's so much expertise that mm. people have to share. That um, you know, creating these different types of forums, these different opportunities are, are really, really where it's at. I think that's what you guys have really mm. um, done a tremendously great job of, of doing through the podcast. So. Um, Tell me, you know, you, 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 made, you made that transition. Um, like, what is, um, like what, what are some of the biggest things that you've learned mm. by, you know, doing this, like maybe from some guests or, 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 different, or different things? What, you know, what are those takeaways? Yeah, that's, that's such a great <laughs> question. And, and right when you ask it, I think about the, you know, 230 plus podcast episodes and each of those stories and individuals, right? Yeah. Um, but if I had to pick just a couple of things, I think one of the biggest learnings for me has been um, uh, the exceptional um, paramount need for more diversity and more uh, more folks are willing to help provide opportunities for all. Mm -hmm. You know, we, through the course of, you know, on the very first episode and who still retains the the uh, championship belt for most appearances is Elba ah. Preha Gallagher, okay. uh, who founded Show Me 50 here in Atlanta. And I have learned so much from Elba and thought leaders like Elba that can, can not only state the case from a data standpoint of why we need, and it's not just a, a male and female, it, it is diversity in all walks of life. Mm -hmm. um, but not only can, can thought leaders like Elba share why the bottom line benefits from diversity, but, but from a personal experience, you know, we've really learned how um, the, the brightest and some of the most capable leaders almost uh, oftentimes can be over, overlooked and mm -hmm. not given opportunities to make a huge impact. Mm -hmm. And it takes everyone to get working together to really work, and it's not easy, but work mm -hmm. to figure out a way to um, make sure opportunities are enjoyed by all. And, you know, I mean, very transparently, we're not where we want to be from a, um, you know, how can we really showcase a, a, a very well thought out, wide, um, um, uh, I want to say diversity, but I don't think that's a word, Dan. <laughs> well, it, uh, it is now. You can just make it. It's all good. <laughs> all right. But, you know, we want to continue to diversify the content we produce. You know, I, uh, I don't think of ourselves and our firm as a marketing firm. We pride ourselves on the ability to go out and find the stories, find the content, mm. find the people. Uh, the technologies, the companies that need the, the mm. spotlight, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and stories that should be told and then work very hard and diligently to, to produce that content. And then, you know, by and large, we have built an engine and continue to add to the engine that helps, you know, maximize the ears and eyes that, that those stories, um, that, that pick up those stories. Yeah. But so the need, the very real need for, for greater diversity across especially supply chain. Uh, and then, you know, probably the second big lesson learned for me, uh, if I had to pick just a couple, is um, lip service leadership versus really um, mm. action based <laughs> leadership. Yeah. And you know, this is uh, this is uh, until you go through all these conversations and and you're getting recorded, right? So you, you're really thinking hard about mm -hmm. every word and phrase and story you're sharing. Yeah, you know, I think this notion of of um, of lip service versus action based is something that's really been mm. core to me for quite some time. But as you sit down and meet with a, a wide variety of leaders that have a wide variety of different approaches, uh, it really dawned on me those that, I mean, there's such a, there's so many lip service leaders mm. <laughs> that can talk the best game, mm. but fail miserably in execution. Mm. And, and not only do, do the leaders fail, but their teams, the organizations, the shareholders, it impacts so many other people versus 
the folks that not only talk a good game, but yeah. more importantly, they make it happen. They do it. The, the, the servant leaders, the folks that, that work hard, not just for the bottom line, but to help everyone win. I mean, that episode in and episode out, it, uh, we see leadership observations and insights that, you know, I, maybe someday we can write a book. There's so many <laughs> I'm sure. Them. I'm sure there's a lot of, th- yeah. I'm sure there's a lot that you've discovered, mm. you know, with that for sure. Mm. And that's certainly been my experience, you know, on this side. We don't, although, I, you know, you said 230 episodes? Just over 230. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we have, yeah, we're, we're not there yet. So you guys are a good 100 <laughs> uh, above us, you know, in front. Um, well, that, but, yeah, that's the beauty. What, what you're sharing there is the beauty, I think, of, of, not just podcasting, but digital media. Yeah. There are millions of different approaches, yeah. whether it's how you put content together or whether the cadence that yeah. we're talking about or whether it's the style or the positioning yeah. or, for that matter, just all the subject matter. Yeah. You know, I, I'll be the first to tell you that in the world of podcasting, I bet supply chain, which I've had people say, you do a podcast on supply chain <laughs> and you have listeners? You know, and, and, and that, <laughs> yeah. that's okay, yeah. you know? But it just, they're... they're one of the beauties of this digital space yeah. uh, is there's so many different ways to get there and to tell the stories, yeah. uh, and, and it's so rewarding all along the way. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, again, same shared experience. We're like, what, you, huh, this? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this. No, but, um, but it's, it's true, and it's really, it's, it's that ability. It, and you, I think you, you, you keyed on something, mm. important, giving the spotlight, you mm. know, and having that ability for, you know, uh, those companies, those organizations that you know need it, or they've got you know amazing innovations mm-hmm. and different things that are going on. So, um, I'm curious, um, you know, and this was something, you know, you know, podcasting in, in general, I think, is one of the fastest mm-hmm. growing um, trends right now, yep. um, and I think it's going to continue to grow. Um, you know, there, I, I can't remember, there's a stat about, you know, it's, fast, it's growing by 30% or 40% mm. in terms of like viewership, you mm. know, from this year to last year is, it, it's, it, it's a, a like huge number, right? Uh, of new listeners that are coming in and, and they're adopting that. Um, why do you think that that is the case? Uh, you know, what I love about it and what I believe is a tailwind for the podcasting industry is number one, it's, it's the um, democratization mm-hmm. of content. You know, whether you um, have $10 to spend or $100 to spend, we'll call it, versus a million, you can jump in and you can uh, build content and have your voice heard or, mm-hmm. or, or um, you know, seek out the voices you want to have heard and, and, and publish. It, it's, there's a very low barrier to entry, which we love about it. And, and I love about the industry because um, there's so many folks that don't have the resources that n- have stories mm-hmm. and perspective that need to be told. So I think that's one of the, the big tailwinds. I think, you know, and I, again, I'll defer to the marketing geniuses in the room, <laughs> um, but I think that the spoken word and 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 also the, the, the video word mm-hmm. um, continues to, I mean, it's not like it's, 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 it's been this week, but, you know, for years it's continued to garner more and more influence. And, yeah. and if you look at how consumers want to, to consume yeah. the content, um, you know uh, the spoken word and via whether it's it's audio or, or video that continues to dominate, especially as we see some of the generational transfer um, uh, influences take yeah. take root, which we talked about in the last conversation. Yeah, you know, one last thing um, when I think about podcasting in particular, you know, if you live in Atlanta, you know traffic well, right? <laughs> really well. Yeah. Some days a lot, a lot, but more than others, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think. I won't, I won't attribute this to the generational transfer, but I think in general, many folks, are, especially professionals, are looking to maximize their time, right? Oh, beyond a doubt, yeah. Whether, you know, so, so while they're making an hour and a half commute for some or 30-minute commute or they're spending up time in the gym or maybe they're in a, di- in a dentist's office waiting that proverbial you know, hour before <laughs> yeah. you're being seen, which Amazon effect's changing, by the way. <laughs> um, on demand is where we're going, right, for everything. Yes. Um, yep. Folks are using that time differently. And one of the ways uh, that it, that they're using that time is by the consumption of podcasts. So yeah. I, I agree with you. I, I think while podcasting has been around for a long time, mm-hmm. um, I think we're still kind of in its infancy in terms of, of just how many players will be there. We've seen some big bets here recently uh, between yeah. Spotify and many others that are doubling down on the investment in the space. And I think some industries, including the Indian supply chain industry, are still really in their infancy when it comes yeah. to how they're leveraging 
Um, it doesn't mean that it, it, it's invisible. There's plenty of outstanding companies involved in supply chain that have great digital products. Yeah. However, many of them are product or service first. Yes. And they're yeah. not agnostic. Right. And if yeah. they're not agnostic, I mean, who wants to listen to an infomercial right. That's for exactly an hour it. into their commute, right? Yeah. I love Ron Papil, right? <laughs> I still love some of those infomercials. You know, set it and forget it. Right. But that's tough to listen to day in and day out. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's an element of, of value. And I think, you know, as, as you mentioned on there, it's really just the way that we that you know, kind of buy now mm. and then pairing in that that shift, you know, it's like everything's, you mentioned the Amazon effect, mm. right? On demand, we want mm. that. Um, and I think that uh, as, as as that experience that we have is, you know, whether you're buying a consumer product or even a, a you know, a B2B product, that that is, that's changing and that expectation to have it. So the, the net net is mm. that we are self-educating. Mm. And so if this is a way that we're now buying and it's not, you know, I don't want to hear the infomercial, right. you know, it, it, we got to learn how to provide value and, and, and share that expertise. I think that's just a you know a, a fantastic way of being able to. Do it. I I mean I'm I don't know I um I love podcasts. But I don't mm. listen to them as much as I should. I have time. I have time. I'm on the phone. You know, like in the car. <laughs> well, you know, hands say- free. Hands free. By the <laughs> way, right. you know, like yeah. You know, there's that saying that uh, what the, the the shoe peddler that that wears holes in his shoes. You know, the right? kid that has like, no. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever that saying is, I usually butcher all the cliches. But <laughs> yeah. There's so much truth there. You know, we're, we are. So, I, I believe we're kindred spirits here. We're so busy spotlighting and and creating content, on all these great stories and these great people and, and these great companies that rarely do we. At least I don't have. I, I try to. And and when we're not doing that, we're doing quality checks on what we have produced. <laughs> and I, guess, I think you get a pass for that. Okay. Like, you know, right. I think good, that's good. Uh, you know you're creating a lot of you know right for, for sure. That, but you know. Um, one other component I think that that's really important and and driving digital media, including podcasting, is the global consumption. Right? Yeah. If you look at, um, I, I want to say we just well, well we published in the two thirties when this uh, interview airs maybe. So if you look back at, at episode one and maybe the first hundred yeah. that we did, we were very internally focused, especially in Atlanta, mm. especially what's right here, mm-hmm. and uh, based on feedback we got and and other opportunities, we said you know we've really got to cover the global end-to-end supply chain mm. industry, right? And, and let's not have every story, as much as we love Atlanta, yeah. supply chain city, how can we <laughs> really um, broadcast from here versus yeah. broadcast on here all the time, right? Mm. Yeah. So with that shift and with some of our content shifts and some of our, our other partners, uh, both internally and externally as our team grew, we've continued to really diversify that, that, uh, that thought leadership to where and one of the things as entrepreneurs, we measure ourselves in a variety of different yeah. ways. Uh, we just hit our 41st country. And when, when you look at all the charts, leadership charts that Apple and Spotify offer, so you can get a sense of, of how your content's landing. Uh, with Thailand, this mm. past week, we just hit our 40, 41st country in That's terms awesome. of, of charts globally for business podcasts. And, and you know, that um, we want to be at 400 yeah. uh, next year. Yeah. But that, you know, from where we started... Um, we're very proud of that journey and proud of how we've tried to get out of our comfort zones to cover more content and, and stories that, you know, we're not even remote experts in. Sure, yeah. Uh, we still have a long way to go as, as, with the, as when it comes to the journey, whether it's global content or diversity of thought leadership or featuring more um, uh, non-mainstream stories. But we've come a long way, and we look forward to making 2020 even a bigger year yeah. for making sure we're, we're, we're covering that global end in supply chain. That's awesome. No, well, congratulations on that. That's fantastic. Um, great team. Th- well, I'm, it, it, it has, hey, you have to have a great team have for to, that. Yeah. Have to. Amanda and Greg and Chris and Jessica, Clay, uh, Michelle um, and Kelly and, and, and several others. You know, these folks have really come together, you know, in startup mode. Yeah, sure. You're yeah. constantly yeah. experimenting, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, and if you're not, then... Watch out. You're going to be in trouble, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but to work with all of these incredibly bright people that um, get the get the feedback cycles and get the experimentation and and get they're, that are willing to try new ideas and bring new ideas and lead new things, it has been an absolute um, the, the the best learning experience of my entire life. Which again, going back to where we started, this is where That's awesome. I think we were born to be. Yeah. And, and while we're really excited of, of, of to where we've gotten today, 
Uh, the sky is the limit, and we're looking forward to doubling down all of these these wins we've had and seeing where it takes us next year. Oh, that's super. That, that's awesome. That's mm-hmm. super. And, you know, I think it's, it's, it's awesome that you, uh, that you found your passion with that, you know, and sometimes it's like it, you kind of come at it from a totally different way. Yes. Like, I don't know how this happened, but it somehow <laughs> happened. It's serendipity sometimes. You know? right? Yeah, exactly. But I think that the key thing is uh, you said uh, experimenting. I think mm-hmm. it maybe there's maybe shifting the topic a little mm-hmm. bit, but on that entrepreneurial mm-hmm. spirit, and I think that 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 there's a, there's always in you know in your DNA mm. that I'm I'm guessing that even before you said you you got pushed out of the tree or whatever, I can't remember what you said there that there was that I'm guessing that that sense of experimenting mm. and just like always looking for something a little bit different and how can I even in, you know maybe I've got a traditional nine mm. to five um, but oh how can I do this still different over here or that mm. was that something that you know. Yeah, that I identify with. So I think there's two things. I think of it as I as I listen to kind of how you're you're posing that question. I think number one, I think I saw a Harvard Business Review article mm. that, based on research, mm. showed that entrepreneurs have more faith mm. uh, than than many other aspects. And I, and and you know, um, I didn't really think about that until I, I I sat back and said, you know, that you know, based on all the conversations and the collaborations, <laughs> yeah. that that probably is something there. And I know for us and and our family that you do have to be willing to not only take on the risk, yeah. which is only one step, but believe yeah. in it, right? Oh, yeah. And faith, faith is a big part of that. Um, but, but secondly, um, you know, you let go, you, whether you're pushed out of the tree mm-hmm. or whether you make that leap. And mm-hmm. sometimes you're, you're not going to make the leap unless you're pushed out of the tree. Yeah. You've got to be willing to embrace the notion of, okay, you know, there's no safety net. Or maybe there's a safety net for six months or, or maybe, you know, maybe for six weeks. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it creates this environment that most entrepreneurs can probably speak to, you can probably, can probably, uh, probably resonates with you, that you can't let that get in the way of executing and operating and investing, whether it's time, uh, blood, sweat, tears, or money, and, and uh, performing. Mm-hmm. And that is a, that what I have found. While every day is not equal, there are some days that are <laughs> much more challenging than others because maybe that you get more bad news or... Some days are much easier. You get good news. Yeah, you've got to compartmentalize, and, mm-hmm. and at the end of the day, you got to make it happen. And and um, everyone approaches that differently. That's why some folks never venture into you know the world of, of being an entrepreneur and yeah. small business, all that stuff. And that's fine. We need everyone. Yeah. However, for us, um, that's the journey we're on, and and being able to compartmentalize is such a critical um, component that's required. To make the journey, mm. yeah, it totally makes sense. Um, and you know, I think it's—I would actually would liken that spirit as well to what organizations need to be thinking mm. themselves uh, relative to. You mentioned early on, you know, as far as like getting their message out there and doing that. I think that it's taking that risk, having that faith. I think mm. that's a very difficult thing, especially when you go into like digital media. And it's, this is new. This is different. We don't know if this is going to work. We think it's going to work. It probably should work. I don't know. Um, you know, and you know, it, it seems from an outside perspective, hearing and looking at your content, that that you've been able to transmit that spirit and really kind of um, communicate that and mm. have it reciprocated mm. uh, by virtue of having like all these other these guests, these other these great companies coming in and sharing that because that is. If you think about it, a little bit of a you know, kind of a you know, a, a nervous uh, you know, kind of scary thing, and then the, then the effect of uh, inspiring other companies. I mean, even uh, like it was us as well, saying, "Hey, wow, that's you know, that's man, what they're doing over there is really good. That's mm-hmm. awesome. We need to continue doing this over here." You know, and and uh, you know, and other companies I know for a fact, you know, looking at that, saying, "You know what? Maybe we need to take that jump too. Mm-hmm. Maybe we need to for our own marketing efforts." You know, or, or, or uh, you know, or, or content, yes. or digital, you know, digital media. You know, I, th- I think your some folks out there mm. in the marketplace are constantly looking for kindred spirits mm. to collaborate with. Because in this day and age, whether it's digital media or elsewhere, there's always a way to collaborate with folks that are kindred spirits and want to collaborate. And and that's that's one of my big lessons learned since day one of being an entrepreneur. I think. Um, I, I think secondly, um, you know, it is such a new space, Mm -hmm. right? Digital media, especially for industry. Mm -hmm. Um, And you're going to have those early adopters that get it, 
Yeah. And not only are they kindred spirits, but but they they love what you're doing. They want to be a part. But then you still have, um, you know, every every study I see, I, I see this word laggards, and I and I don't love that word <laughs> because it, it, it's just word. no, <laughs> especially for like technology yeah. in this day and age yeah. of di- digitization. You yeah. look at Gartner's and these others that publish this research. Right. A lot of times they refer to folks that are slow to embrace new technologies. Yeah. So there are lots of folks that are slow to embrace digital media, and and I guess the way. Um, whether it's what we've seen or how we're geared, you know, I believe that that social media and your digital footprint that exists that 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 you've got to um, uh, cultivate, right? And 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 very very intentional and deliberately. Mm-hmm. These days, I, I see that as as the website twenty years ago, where yeah. it becomes table 100%. stakes. You know, hundred percent. No, I I, I agree one hundred percent with what you're saying. I it that's that's the opportunity. It's a land grab. Mm. The table stakes right mm. there. It's it's wide and it's open for right now. It's not going to be if there's a limited window and opportunity. That's right. Yeah. So either you, you get it and you're with it, even if it's yeah. not how you're geared, even if you, you know, we pick on the 80s all the time because we probably both grew up in the 80s. <laughs> um, even if you're geared like it's 1985 and, and you're enjoying your, your Christmas vacation and, and you want to stay right there. <laughs> right. The world is changing uh, at a pace that, that arguably has never seen, you know, yeah. been seen before. Yeah. And the same thing applies with getting your message out there, whether you're a service company or a manufacturer or, you know, 3PL or logistics firm, you name it. Um, some, many professionals and leaders are quick to, to, to wrap their head around that and, and embrace it and yeah. figure out what needs to change. And others, it's still going to be, it's going to be 1986 in a few <laughs> weeks, you know? And, 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 yeah. and hey, that's yeah. okay. We, we, yeah. uh, we, we've got to work with folks that... Um, can't work with everybody, yeah. right? No, that totally makes sense. So I've got um, just like one or two other little questions mm. that that are, you know, this. I mean, this is great, like backstory, just getting to understand. I, I love all this mm. stuff. Um, what are th- in, in the supply chain space? I mean, obviously, you've talked to a lot mm. of leaders, a lot of executives, a lot of companies. You know, what are you seeing going into 2020, 2021, like some of those big shifts from a whether, you know, technology standpoint or obviously that's a, you know, a pretty big topic. Sure. Um, or what are those big trends that you're seeing moving into 2020? Uh, such a great question. And, you know, that's one of the questions I usually uh, wrap up with in a lot of our episodes. <laughs> and, and now I feel how the tables are turning. Yeah, I, right? I totally <laughs> turn the tables there. Yeah, yeah. Well, so here's, here's some general observations, and this comes from uh, lots of conversations, lots of different initiatives. Yeah. You know, we were on a, um, a supply chain talent uh, uh, webcast a few weeks ago with, with, with some folks I deeply respect. And here's some, some general observations. I think, number one, um, the, the uh, war for talent, which, which some folks have told me doesn't exist, which I love that. that mm-hmm. Counter prevailing uh, war for talent. Yeah, the war for talent. You know, war for talent. Okay, yeah, yes, war gotcha. For talent. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, that a lot of folks would say that's alive and well, and and we're going to continue to see um, whether it's the well known brands or some of the you know some of the newer companies change their approach to mm. not just attracting talent, um, but realizing how how ever more important it is to develop that talent if yeah. you want to retain the talent. Yeah, I saw just in the last few weeks that uh, Ford Motor Company. Mm-hmm. Which is going through, I think, an eleven billion dollar transformation of the company, uh, is now allowing uh, thirteen hundred folks to bring their dogs to work at Ford. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay. Um, and they're also reinventing their their campus in Deer, uh, Dearborn, Michigan, to be better suited for some of the collaboration that that you know some of these newer generations really crave. Yeah. And that's Ford. Yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, uh, and so I think you're going to continue to see a lot of organizations reinvent. How they attract and retain talent, which is great. Right. Um, hopefully, in that same vein, uh, and and maybe um, inarguably, you know, because you know millennials are now the um, uh, the plurality of the workforce, mm-hmm. and Gen Z is right behind them. You know, I had I heard a great supply chain leader that that uh, on this webcast say that millennials are constantly dumped on, and you know. <laughs> That yeah. is well put because yeah, yeah. they are. You know how you, know, you go to an industry event, and if you're there all day, you're going to have at least three or four conversations where folks There's take millennials, a pot da, shot. Da, 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 yeah, da, yeah. <laughs> and you know we've got to change that as an yeah. industry. You know yeah. we got to tra- from a supply chain standpoint, we got to change it. We got to embrace it. We got to figure out what we need to do to better embrace and engage all the new generations that are coming to the workforce. Um, so I think that will continue yeah. to be a trend. And yeah. then from a technology standpoint, I am no technologist, but 
as you might imagine, supply chain is technology these days. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. drives a lot of our conversations. Um, AI is what I've learned is, is you know, for months we heard of it as still future state and what's around the corner. Yeah. AI is powering so much today, not just because it's innovative, but really out of necessity. We're seeing how computer manufacturers are mm-hmm. changing up how they build uh, their devices yeah. to be- take better advantage of, of some of these forces that give the, the products more power or give the processes more power. AI is, is, is um, it's incredible to see how active it is and, and how supply chains are getting time back and resources back by very practically deploying that. Mm. Uh, blockchain. <laughs> you know, I think it's, as, as we may have joked about when we were together last, uh, I think it's federal law to drop the word supply chain, uh, blockchain in any and every supply chain conversation <laughs> these days. Yeah. But, you know, it is, uh, I believe, as we have spoke with more people and done our own research and, and seen more and more practical use cases. Mm-hmm. You know, Walmart Canada is doing something uh, where they're really um, uh, saving time, money, and resources and providing more transparency for everybody yeah. using blockchain. And we see more and more of these practical use cases come out around blockchain. Um, I think 2020 and beyond, we're going to see a lot more. Um, we're going to see a lot less folks and professionals that view it as the flavor of the month, mm. and better yet, look to embrace it and figure out how they can plug in this very powerful, um, a transformational uh, technology and 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 uh, segment, really, of supply chain technology and figure out how to use it in a very yeah. meaningful, practical way with bottom-line results. Um, and then one last notion. I, mean, I think something that we've been, we've been uh, is inarguable, you know, the, the globalization of supply chain, globalization mm-hmm. of business, for that matter. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, between that trend and the Amazon effect, holy cow, it's changing life yes. minute by minute, right? Yeah. So I think... What we're seeing is many companies that may have not had as much of a um, a global culture, mm-hmm. a global welcoming, welcoming culture, a global talent acquisition strategy, a global um, um, effort at at really making business happen today. With with t- you know taking the blinders off of if you're based here in the states and you know many companies have those American blinders on. Yeah. That's changing dramatically from yeah. what we're seeing. We're seeing more and more global strategies, whether it's you know technology related, talent related, or go to market messaging related, and that's going to that's going to continue to impact um, so many components of making supply chain happen today and in the future. So those are some things that are they are top of mind for me. Yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll knock out a hundred more episodes and we'll be <laughs> back and, and share more, maybe. Yeah. Well, we'll report on that. See how yes. that uh, you know how that. Yes. Should, but that all sounds good to me. I mean, it definitely you know hearing the same thing, seeing the, you know very very similar mm. things, especially on that you know war for talent mm. piece. And obviously, of course, you know across you know all the technology, there's a lot of uh, amazing things mm. coming down the tracks. A lot of challenges. And yeah, Danny, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention one more thing. Okay, all so, right. So you know, go for we've it. got a lot of wheels turning, Uh-oh. but sustainability. Yeah, green yeah. supply chain. Yeah, you know, this is something that. Um, um, well, I blame I. I poo-pooed maybe the notion you know, years ago, right? <laughs> I think a lot of people did. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, but now that we've had a really, um, we've looked. I mean, heck, a- as consumers are more and more willing and, and really demanding companies to see their their sustainability initiatives, to see know where certain ingredients c- came from, yeah, to know what they're doing with the waste that's a byproduct of so many things. I think um, sustainability is going to be continue to be a huge. Um, issue that more and more companies not just want to grapple, but they have to because yeah. the markets are demanding it. So yeah. I, I probably would yeah. be remiss if we didn't mention that in terms of uh, some of the, the the biggest priorities in supply chain. A lot of big challenges coming up, that's for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, but a lot of great solutions and innovations. So, um, well, Scott, I think we could probably go on for like another hour or two. <laughs> I know we've gone on for an hour, but we. Can, I mean, there's a there's a ton. But I really appreciate uh, you coming on um, on an industrial stage. So if anyone would like to, and I highly recommend that mm-hmm. audience, they check you guys out, supplychainnowradio.com. Right. Uh, and I'm sure you find that on any of your podcasting stations, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, you mentioned Spotify, mm. uh, and all the like. That's Android right. devices, I think they've got their thing out there. I don't know, I'm an iPhone user. So, um, but um, uh, and, yeah, anyways, and if there's any other place that'd be best to find you? Uh, the, all that works, and also I'd invite 
each of your listeners the 2020 Atlanta Supply Chain Awards. Oh, yes. We yeah. are driving. Uh, really enjoy the partnership there we've got with a, a variety of folks, but to include the Metro Atlanta Chamber, mm-hmm. CSC and P Atlanta Roundtable, and Apex Atlanta. Okay. Second year uh, awards, uh, AtlantaSupplyChainAwards.com. Nominations are open. Registrations are open. Sponsorships are open. We're being host, hosted by Modex, which I know you and, and I both. Yes, it'll be in March, right? Yes, yeah. March yeah. 10th, 2020. And I would love and, and welcome any any professional or especially organization that has a presence in the metro Atlanta area to plug in with us. Excellent. No, that, that is great. Yeah, so I highly encourage anyone. You've got nominations or you, mm. you want to sponsor, mm. go check that out. Fantastic. This is what year is this for? Have you been year doing two. this? Year two. Okay. Yeah. Year one was uh, was cr- creating it from scratch with, with some with some helpful resources and 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 you know we benchmarked some of the uh, different programs that are out there, but we failed to see one that really represented the true end to end supply chain across Metro Atlanta. Awesome. And yeah. you know, folks be surprised just how much takes place in the twenty nine county and Metro Atlanta area. So um, I look forward to collaborating with you. This is by the way, Dan. This is you know I admire what you do. Uh, we have been benchmarking and observing from afar. Uh, I, I'm glad now we've just, in the last you know, few weeks, been able to really sit down and, and yeah. catch up meaningfully. Absolutely. Uh, but, um, you know, if you're listening to this and, and you're, you're still figuring out a way to, to plot your path forward from a, a, a go-to market messaging, from a, a storytelling, from a, you know, how can you put what you do in front of more people effectively and successfully, Danny is an incredible resource, uh, and I mean mean that very genuinely, and I look forward to our continued collaboration. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. You know, the, the feeling is very mutual, mm. so we feel the same way about you guys. Thank you so much for, for coming on. All right. Thank you, Danny. All right. So, uh, yeah, another great episode. Um, listen, I, um, we're, gonna, we're making some changes here at Industrial Stage. We're going to go you know, learn a little bit more uh, you know, storytelling and, and, and hearing people's stories, and I just really, really loved hearing Scott's story as he – literally has created this thing, uh, and it's, dr- it's driven through his passion. Uh, and a lot of companies, I mean, he's, they're, they're, they're wildly successful. If you haven't checked them out, you need to, supplychainnowradio.com. You can go find them on all the podcasting stations. They do a phenomenal job, uh, and they're, they're really keeping a pulse on the industry and what is going on. So I just loved hearing the story. I loved hearing about the trends and the different things that are coming down the pipe that they, they've been hearing and seeing from you know, all the leaders in the space. So anyways, uh, you know, check them out. So thanks so much for watching or listening to today's episode. If you have any questions you'd like us to answer on the show, you can reach out to us at industrialsage.com forward slash questions. Be happy to answer them for you. And that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much. We'll be back next week with another episode of Industrial Sage. And I'm signing off. Good night. Good day. Good morning. Whatever time you're watching this. All right. I'll see you later.